We are so blessed to be able to share a little love through this devotional with you from Princeton Church. And we pray that it is an encouragement to you today. Valentine's Day is just around the corner, so this is your friendly reminder to plan a little something something for the people in your life who are special to you. Did you know that Americans will buy about 48 million pounds of candy and on average will spend $196 on Valentine's Day and will send 145 million Valentine's Day cards? How will you reach out and show the love of Jesus on Valentine's Day? Candy is a delicious gift for sure, but handwritten notes, cards, or acts of kindness, they are always appreciated. And for the Christian, every day is really Valentine's Day. Every day we have opportunities to express the love of Christ to others. And every day is an opportunity to be an example of God's love in what we say and what we do. In Luke 10, 27, Jesus said to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. You've heard the saying, well, his heart was in the right place. So today, let's ask ourselves, is our heart, our spiritual heart, in the right place? All of the blood in our body travels through our heart and our head. So get this, how we think and feel is spiritually connected to our heart. When we sin, become angry, hurt, or disappointed, our head and our heart are affected. And God wants our heart and our mind to be controlled by his love. We can choose to allow God's love to flow through our heart and our mind, to be the filter for our words, our thoughts, and our actions. And sometimes we need to choose to love and demonstrate love on purpose. It's a good thing to take inventory of our relationships and assess just how we're doing in expressing love to others. At best, life is short. So now is the time to share and express love to those God has placed in our path, in our lives. What is it that fills your love tank? In Gary Chapman's book, The Five Love Languages, he shares that there are five basic love languages, five ways to express love emotionally, and that each of us has a primary love language that needs to be met if we're really to feel loved. And so if we want those around us to feel loved, we must learn to speak their love language. What are these love languages? Well, one are words of affirmation. And this is simply speaking praise and appreciation, giving compliments, offering thoughtful and positive words to bless others with spoken words. Acts of service is another love language. You've heard it said, actions speak louder than words. Well, this is particularly true when it comes to feeling love for some people. Taking time out of your own schedule to help by running errands, helping with chores or a dreaded project. You've also also heard it said the way to a man's heart is through his stomach well that's true for most people and especially men children teenagers and college students so the Irish proverb to shorten the road is a good one to remember finding even the simplest ways to serve to shorten the road will speak loudly to those who feel loved through acts of service a love language that many appreciate is receiving gifts Throughout human history in every society, gift giving has been perceived as an expression of love. So giving gifts is universal and because there's just something inside our human psyche that says, if you love someone, you will give him or her a gift. For those with the receiving gifts love language, they feel most loved by receiving gifts. So it's really important to remember and celebrate their birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, and no occasion days. The gifts don't need to be expensive. They don't need to be elaborate. It really is the thought that counts. Homemade cards or a few cheerful flowers can communicate your love and your care. Little things mean a lot to a person whose primary love language is receiving gifts. A fourth love language is quality time. It's been said that absence makes the heart grow fonder, and this can be true, but over time, a lack of quality time can really hurt a relationship. So the word quality means excellent and reliable. Giving someone your undivided time and attention is one of the best ways that you can show your love. 
Quality time is taking the time to look someone in the eyes and listen with your heart. It means no cell phone, no television, no video games. It means being there and being present. Even just giving someone 20 minutes of quality time goes a long way. And the fifth love language is physical touch. There is emotional power in physical touch, and this is why it's so important for us to pick up babies, to touch them, to show our care and love and tenderness towards them. Long before an infant even understands the meaning of the word love, he or she feels loved by physical touch. So a spontaneous pat on the back, an arm around the shoulder, a hug or a kiss expresses love to those whose love language is physical touch. Expressing love and receiving love improves our mood. It provides comfort and strength when we don't feel well. It can help us live a longer life. It decreases the risk of heart disease. It lowers blood pressure. It improves our immunity and it helps us to recover faster from illness and surgery. It lessens our physical pain. It helps us feel less anxious, less angry and less lonely. The June 13, 1995 edition of the Chicago Tribune shares the story of Russell Herman, a 67-year-old carpenter who died in 1994, and his will included a staggering set of bequests. Included in his plan for distribution was more than $2 billion for the city of East St. Louis, another billion and a half for the state of Illinois two and a half billion for the national forest system and to top off the list herman left six trillion dollars to the government to help pay off the national debt and as amazing and as generous as all this sounds there was only one small problem the only asset herman possessed when he died was a 1983 oldsmobile he made grand promises but they amounted to nothing he really wasn't being generous after all. Herman's promises were meaningless because he had left nothing, no money at all, to back up those promises. And I speak for myself here. Sometimes we have grand thoughts and great intentions, but we don't follow through. Let's make today a day we put our love for others into action. Our true generosity isn't determined by the amount that we give, but by the condition of our hearts. In Luke 21, three and four, when Jesus saw the widow give her two mites in the temple, he responded, truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. All these people, they gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. The sacrificial gift that she gave demonstrated how much she loved God and his work. And the best way that we can determine what we love most will be obvious through our words, our service, by how we use our time and our money and how we demonstrate love. The English proverb, love will find a way is accurate. We find time, we make time for what we really want to do. And everywhere Jesus went, he healed, he helped, he loved people. Reach out today to, to show someone in need. Give them a loving touch, an encouraging word, kindness. Someone needs your help today. Someone needs your quality time to really listen to them. Someone needs a gift from you that shouts, I'm thinking of you, I love you. Tell them, show them that Jesus loves them, that you love them. For sure, what the world needs now is love, love, sweet love. So God bless you, my friend. Go out and make today a happy heart day. And may the love that you share be multiplied and returned to you in countless ways. God bless.